FIFA International Soccer for Sega Genesis. EA Sports is in the game. This is the beginning of a video game franchise that would span three decades. Join me on a nostalgic journey through every FIFA as we explore the evolution of the world's most popular football video game. Welcome to the FIFA Retrospective. Released in 1993, EA Sports Vancouver Canada had their first installment of the FIFA franchise. Originally ported for the Sega Genesis, FIFA sold extremely well in the UK and US markets, eventually topping the sales charts in both countries in 1994. FIFA International Soccer was crucial for the jumpstart of the series we know today, exclusively ported to the Sega Genesis in July of 1994, keeping the game fairly similar but adding in some major and minor leagues into the game. FIFA Soccer 95 was the next stepping stone to this great, great franchise. Next Next Generation Soccer was the first game to use real-time 3D graphics. FIFA Soccer 96, the first game that included some real player names and positions, the games also sold greatly in the UK, leading to the big turning point in the franchise. Released on the PC, FIFA 97 included a brand new game mode to play, an indoor game mode of a six-a-side game. FIFA 97, though, seemed to have mixed reviews around the game reviewer publishers. The game overall was a stepping stone for the beloved FIFA Street titles and Volta game modes to come in the future. It's 1997, and the World Cup is fastly approaching at the end of the season. EA have made the decision to call the game World to the World Cup. They also decided to include an official soundtrack, the main theme of the song being Blur Song 2. If World to the World Cup wasn't enough to try and hype up the emerging World Cup, one game dedicated to the whole tournament may do. World Cup 98 was EA's first attempt at making a game specifically for the biggest tournament in world football. Naturally, the main purpose was playing the World Cup tournament with all the teams included in the real life 98 World Cup. One amazing feature was the addition of World Cup Classics, where you get to play old classic matches. Some teams that did not qualify were also added in. After the amount of time and effort it took by EA to release two games in the span of one calendar year, FIFA 99 came with crazy addition. The game had a European Dream League which introduced 20 of the top sides in Europe. The game seemed to be more responsive and was improved graphically. The gameplay movements accounted for a very positive reviews overall though. Gimme, 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 FIFA. It's in the game. It's in the game. Capping off the 90s, we entered the 2000s where EA wanted no wrong with this title. This came with a pretty standard FIFA release, finally licensing the MLS, as well as naming the North American release FIFA 20 Major League Soccer. It's November of 2000, and FIFA Football 2001 had done great to improve graphically and adding in features to make the experience better to play. Between the release of FIFA 2001 and FIFA 2002, Konami would release her own football simulation video game. While not having the same licensing rights like EA's FIFA did, it'd rather focus on giving the consumer better gameplay than the competitors. This led to Pez receiving a 9 out of 10 across all the major video game reviewers, compared to FIFA's 6 to 8 out of 10 scores from previously and following titles. FIFA 2002 is important for a few reasons. At the time, Konami had taken the rights of Japan, which is one of the host nations for that year's World Cup. This deal between Japan's national team and Konami was the beginning of Pro Evolution Soccer really trying to put their foot down in the industry. Similarly to the 98 World Cup game, they added in countries that did not qualify, adding in continent all-stars and a World Cup all-star team including the best players in the world. FIFA Football 2003 Released on October 25, 2002, the game overall had quality of life improvements to make the game more realistic. Chants and songs that were displayed in real-life club games were added in. If EA didn't care about Konami's PES titles though, they would have to at least notice them as sales for FIFA 23 would be overshadowed by PES 2. And even with the success of both PES and FIFA were experiencing, EA decided to not change much from FIFA 2003 to FIFA 2004. A new feature was added in and which included an off-ball movement allowing the person playing to have the second player run closer to the ball carrier or run into space to receive a pass. Reminiscent of the player lock system in current games. Released earlier to get a head start of the competitor and to not clash with the FIFA Street game coming later that year. FIFA Football 2005 had great reviews for their amazing additions to the game. FIFA 2005 would then add in a 15 year long manager mode. FIFA 06 saw an overhaul. The developers had actually rewritten half of the code for this game. Career mode seemed to be improved from the previous titles that had the mode. You could now negotiate sponsors for your club. The mode entirely works on the premise that you need good squad rotation, good results, 
and a good financial decision to sustain the club's goals, as well as staff upgrades to make your job easier to do. FIFA International Soccer was added in as a retro game to play within the game, as well as videos, tutorials, and even season highlights from the football season prior. They added in challenges so you can unlock prizes, player biographies, camera angles, kits, stadiums, and videos. It's 2006, the World Cup in Germany has arrived, and so has the 2006 FIFA World Cup game gives the option to control 127 playable clubs, online and single player modes were both available, as well as a virtual store was open to spend on uniforms, historic players, in-game clothing, and gameplay options. In comes the 7th generation of game consoles for the FIFA 07 title. This version of the game comes with a new engine to improve graphics and physics. With the massive improvements being on a new console, the issue lied in the development of the game, which would take too long to make, causing a total of 27 leagues in the base version of the game to go down to 7 leagues. FIFA 08 came with a bang, improving graphically once again. EA would add in pretty cool features at the time, which is a Be a Pro where you get to play as one player throughout the match. A new skill moves were added in. The manager mode included some quality of life improvements like scheduled training on certain dates and the option to play four preseason friendly matches. For many within the company, it was seeing like it was only up and up, but the glooming fact in the background was with the success of FIFA 07, Great Patterson, FIFA's lead designer in 2005, would say that that making FIFA 08, they didn't even look towards PES as EA because they had so much within FIFA to do. PES would reply to this though, stating that EA copied all the good things from the PES titles and put them into their game. This back and forth was heating up, so the games had to act fast. Whoever came out with the better additions and captivated this generation would surely win this battle. This leads us to the most important FIFA title of all time. FIFA 2009 released on the 7th generation consoles. The game was made to improve on the responsiveness and feel of the game in general allowing for a quicker release of the ball, better off-ball runs, better animations overall, better goalkeeper technology, as well as adding weather and time changes in as well. The introduction of pro clubs was added in in this FIFA, a staple of modern games, and the notable difference between this game and any football video game ever before was FIFA Ultimate Team. Online play had been crucial for titles before it to bring player bases together and grow a sense of community, but nothing like Ultimate Team would ever come close. Coming in as a downloadable game mode and released only on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 console, EA had a card collecting game with a great currency system that was obtainable through microtransactions, using the players you get in packs to play against people around the world. The battle for the biggest football video game simulation would continue though. PES 2009 would sell 6.9 million copies and FIFA 09 would sell 8.7 million. Great numbers for both games, but the addition of Ultimate Team would be too much for PES, and with PES over the years not being much of a competitor, it was still a glaring issue that EA created for the themselves. How big can football get? EA Sports, it's in the game. Without knowing the impact of FIFA 09 will have on the franchise, EA had to come back with a bang to ride the momentum. Manager mode was still seen as the major selling point, showing that FIFA Ultimate Team was not an overnight success, and the game needed to be well balanced in order to appeal to a wider audience. Adding in a new assistant manager that takes care of the lineup for you, building a squad depending on the quality of the opponent and who is available to be selected, this transfer system is more realistic, and the money isn't the driving force to acquiring a player. The growth of the players now based on in-game performances, demands on players, and achievements. It's 2010, Shakira shaking her hips, and the 2010 World Cup game featured a completely different experience to the other World Cup games to the years before. The soundtrack, menus, gameplay, had a grip on many for that generation. With the World Cup subsided, EA released FIFA 11, advertising it as brand new features being added in. That seemingly aren't features that we already had, or things that aren't very relevant, actually. A cycle that would be prevalent to FIFA's to come. One of those features being pro passing. You might think by the name of it, it sounds so professional. It means something great. Well, Pro passing is simply the idea that a 180 degree pass won't have the same amount of power and accuracy as a normal pass, or a first time pass from a difficult ball is less effective. To put it simple, the features being added in aren't groundbreaking which really damages the relationship people had with the EA FIFA title. It seems instead of adding in stuff that the audience would like to enjoy, they would re-release similar games with these year's players and kits. With that being said, EA had heard feedback from most of the casual fan base that had a hard time with people that got to abuse all the overpowered tactics. So FIFA 12 came in and introduced impact engine, tactical defending, and precise dribbling. These were just subtle improvements to the defending and dribbling mechanics, giving it a cool tagline and describing it in a way 
you think is completely new. It was perfectly described in KSI's FIFA 12 gameplay trailer breakdown. Okay, oh, now that's very nice. Guess what, guys? We won that. You can now tackle. Yes, you can now tackle in this game. I, like many others, love FIFA 13 and hold it very highly. The issue being that FIFA 13 didn't add in any crazy new features that really affected the game. And similarly to how we feel today, the game started to become stale. It brought what you expect from a FIFA title and was the first FIFA title for many. EA had no competition, was selling very well, was getting positive feedback from mainstream media. Yet many of the Korn fan base were disappointed again with the release of FIFA 14, as well as trying to make the game more realistic, adding in more features graphically to improve and improve the realism within the pitch, how the grass moves, how the wind interacts with the player's kits, or even how they were wet after raining. On top of making the meta of the game appeal to the casuals, FIFA had looked the other way from their core fan base to make more money in the long run. They still added in some core elements like legends that were later called icons. It's 2014, and after the success of the previous World Cup, 2014 World Cup Brazil was going to be not only a solo game title, but even a game mode in FIFA Ultimate Team. The game itself had mixed reviews, but the feeling around the time was real hype for the tournament, causing the game to get real traction. The soundtrack and the menus for the 2014 World Cup game was amazing, just like the 2010 version. FIFA 14 introduced legends, and in FIFA 15, we got some new ones, as well as concept squads, which would allow you to mock up a squad and attempt to create squads with the right formation and good chemistry. This FIFA brought a big Big shift in licensing as well, making career mode games look just like the Premier League. This in the end was fairly similar to the previous games though, and just like coin selling was a problem way back when, it was a problem then, and it had gotten big within the YouTube space, even getting content creators that were getting coin selling sponsors. This caused EA introducing price ranges and completely killing the market. FIFA 16 was another step for EA's goal of getting more licensing deals done. Stadiums were added in, more icons were added in, and even adding in female players for the first time in the series. A new game mode in foot was added in, but draft, which included you to pick out a selection of players in each position as you tried to feel the best possible squad with the most chemistry going into four knockout style games. The game did give hope to the community that EA could grow from this point. After so many years with Lionel Messi on the cover, Michael Roy becomes the cover star for FIFA's release of FIFA 17. This game is coded in a new Frostbite engine, adding in new game faces and leaps. A big selling point for the game was the Journey, a single player campaign mode, which even has different outcomes to the way you interact with the dialogue wheel. The biggest improvements were in FIFA Ultimate Team, which included squad building challenges, where you were able to build a squad of players which fit the requirements to complete the challenges and get rewards. Packs, players, and even consumables were part of the rewards that EA would release sometimes daily but mostly during major promos like team of the year team of the season and footy this fifa added in a lot of promos into the yearly cycle only increased for the years to come due to the success of fifa 17 the upcoming world cup once again and fifa being bundled with eighth generation consoles fifa 18 would become the best selling fifa title of all time the journey comes up again for its second appearance fifa will also add in a fifa world cup game mode similar to the one added in in fifa 14 making for a great summer gaming experience for many at the time. On the 26th installment of FIFA, FIFA 19 finally released licensing for UEFA's two biggest club competitions, the Champions League and Europa League. After two years of the journey, it returned for another edition called the Journey's Champion. The same things were still an issue though. Broken mechanics, lag, pay to win for foot crossing and headers were extremely overpowered and were a problem to many causing conflicts between EA themselves and creators in the FIFA space. Because Royal's the new right. Royal breaks new ground. Yeah, that's wrong. With Messi and Barcelona having a Konami contract to put them into the PES game and Ronaldo splitting his ways with EA Sports, there was a need for a cover star to come through, which is perfect timing for Ian Hazard to step up for the cover star for FIFA 20. Similar to Ian Hazard's career with Madrid though, FIFA 20 was poorly received once again amongst creator, professional players, and the core community. While improvements did come in the form of some quality of life upgrades for career mode, foot, 
and a whole new game mode, Volta. Volta was supposed to be the way EA could put the FIFA Street franchise into their main series game. The game was given features to make the game less arcadey and more prone to error. This sense of transitioning from a friendly to a competitive esports was felt throughout everyone. Games like Fortnite had given a rise in esports, so EA thought the next step would be to take this and make this a priority. Instead, this started a downfall. Kylian Mbappe would join a list of great players to be the cover star of FIFA 21, a game that came with a lot of controversy following the loot box microtransactions action lawsuit the weekly promo started to be common and didn't make the cards have that special exclusivity despite making changes to foot again and career mode it would soon become boring for many of the players in march of 2021 twitter had lead conversations with people working within ea's fifa department who were selling icon moments cards to whoever would get connections with the employee this became a huge scandal within the foot community called ea gate this and many of the reasons i have stated made it clear that ea had slowly lost the grip of their biggest franchise advertising its hyper potion technology which uses motion capture of players real life movements and actually giving the idea for the slogan of the game powered by football EA would add in foot heroes an idea similar to icon this would start a crazy amount of special promo cards throughout the game even giving major promos like team of the season or team of the year a token system totaling the amount of car types to 36 compared to 7 in fifa 12 10 years prior. Slight changes to pro clubs, traits and growth, and career mode cutscenes, as well as foot rewards, would do nothing to the player base that wasn't enjoying the last few games of FIFA releases. As of creating this video before Team of the Season is even out, FIFA 23 has surely been a game of ups and downs, the beginning being one of the most interesting beginnings to a FIFA since FIFA 18 pre patch EA would add a new running type which would start to make different cards usable. Players like Kala would be very good in game, but this would be short lived, as EA would patch it to make that most lengthy players wouldn't be as fast anymore. Despite having the hype of the upcoming World Cup in place, it seemed EA wanted to take a new route with the additional content during the world's biggest tournament. Instead of making a separate game mode like before in foot, it was a three month long promotion of many card types, all serving different purposes. This wouldn't go too well with the fans of the game as it seemed to be lazy and not too much fun. It's the constant content that creates the sense of nothing being all that special and all that necessary for you to complete. Since EA Sports released her first installment of this amazingly huge brand, the FIFA game series as a whole has definitely had its highs and lows, but I know the memories we've made and the people we've met have surely made up for it.